Ah, oh, lovely Pendine Sands. Now, where's Llewellyn with that hamper? Sorry, Lee. M4 was murder. Welcome to a brand new series of Scrap Heap Challenge, where crackpot creators pull engineering rabbits from our top hat of scrap. And this year marks our 10th anniversary. In that time, we've gone through a 1,000 tonnes of scrap and three different scrap heaps. We've met some amazing characters. Now, that, now is, that a proper is a proper job. Proper job. <laughs> Created all manner of machines. There's brute force and ignorance on board that here. <laughs> <laughs> and set over a hundred unbelievable challenges. Oh, it's a double, really. Not only that, but we've taken the whole shebang on tour with our scrap heap road shows. And even taken to the skies. So well done, us. This time round, we've upped the stakes with a hundred tons of extra scrap and another dozen mind-mangling challenges. And as ever, we've provided state-of-the-art tools. And we're off to a high-octane start for our new series as we attempt to break one of our own records. Back in Series 6, a team of car engineers called the Catalysts set a top speed of 72 miles per hour in our Grand Prix Challenge. We'll be asking our teams to beat that in our very own scrap speed record attempt. And where better to do it than historic Pendine Sands? The marble flat sands of Pendine have hosted record attempts since the 1800s. In 1927, Malcolm Campbell raced his famous Bluebird along the shores, reaching 174 miles per hour. Our teams probably won't beat that, but you never know. Our first trio of fast lane freaks know all about putting on a good show. They're a team of pyrotechnicians from Bath. One thing these West Country wonders won't be short of is illuminating ideas. Lighting the blue touch paper is Captain Mark. Standing well back and keeping their powders dry are Bright Sparks Dave and Scoosie. Ooh, that's pretty. It's the Rocketeers. They'll be up against a team of motor mechanics from Birmingham. Nuts, bolts and elbow grease are a way of life for these Black Country bodgers. Yelling out orders and sucking through his teeth is Captain Mo. Drinking tea and scavenging all the top gear are his teammates Derek and Cliff. Nit nit, it's the Brom Broms. Welcome, teams. Now it's keys in the ignition and eyes to the horizon, as your challenge today is to smash the Scrap Heap land speed record, which presently stands at a staggering. <laughs> 72 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, teams. You have a mere 10 hours to design vehicles fast enough to make the wind whistle through your teeth. OK, teams, start your engines on the sound of the gong. <laughs> so, what do you think then, guys? Land speed yeah, record, that's good. a good one, isn't it? Yep. What are we going to go for then? We need something with a big engine. Lightweight frame, and we go for a rear engine, yeah? Definite. You're talking dragster. Gotta be like Peter Perfect off the back of your races. Yeah, definitely. Need some box steel to get a frame together. Our team seem to have grasped the task, but they may be in need of some roadside assistance. So we've brought in the experts. Getting the Rocketeers off the launch pad is a man with over 20 years' experience building high speed cars and dragsters. If the Rocketeers are looking for a speed boost, they've come to the right man. He's John Webster. Hi, John. I'm Mark. Hi, Mark. Yeah, we've had a few ideas. Right, OK. Uh, kind of along the right lines. Minimal frontal area for aerodynamics. Yep. If we put an aerodynamic device on it, like a wing or something, it actually generates drag. So if we can do it via a spoiler, that creates negative pressure, so mm. it reduces drag. But Keep it low to the ground. Well, expert and team seem agreed on a classic land speed vehicle. The Rocketeers have plumped for a long, sleek, lightweight chassis powered by a front-mounted engine. In theory, the aerodynamic design is great for reducing drag, but they'll need to rely on finding a big enough engine to get them up to speed. If their power pack is too puny, it won't be a record-breaker, it'll be a trip to the shops. 
We've got to break the 100 mile an hour mark, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, it's, not just, it's not, not just a task in breaking speed, it's about beating the other guys as well, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> but keeping those other guys out in front is a man who runs a company prepping supercharged race cars for the track. He's gunning for pole position today, so there'll be no idling for the Brum Brums. He's Steve Howard. Hi, lads, what have you got? All right, what we've got is normal stretch uh, box uh, chassis, rear wheel drive. Yeah, kind of along the same lines I was thinking of as well. Okay. Same layout, basically, but engine choice, go for a big engine. You're going to need it. You're going to need plenty of power there. So I was thinking along the lines of V6, probably turbocharge it. Yeah. Get some decent power there. The Brum Brum's vehicle will be an altogether more brutal affair. Like their opponents, they're looking for a meaty power plant which they'll mount on a box chassis and give it extra grunt with a turbocharger. Power won't be a problem, but with no aerodynamics, they'll need all of it to get ahead. How fast do you think this will go at the end of the day? About 140. Something like Sounds that. good to me. Sounds Before good to anyway. me. I'll be happy if it does 135. Yeah. Yeah. But before they can get building, our teams need a shopping list of scrap to scavenge. What we need is a donor vehicle. Suggest a subframe. Big diameter wheels. Big diameter back wheels. An assembly out of a car. Engine or engines. No bling bits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Daylight's nope. burning. Get out. Get some Dave. So it's a guided missile versus a power cart. That sounds like a recipe for some high speed shenanigans. Yeah, but a recipe needs some precise ingredients. And will the Brum Brums find a big enough engine? And will the Rocketeers find a pointy nose car? In 1997, Wing Commander Andy Green drove a rocket car at 763 miles per hour. Yeah. Back in 1902, Leon Cephalet, a French man no less, managed 75 miles per hour. But that's still three miles an hour faster than any vehicle built on Scrappy Challenge. So this week, the challenge is simple. Our teams have to beat that record at historic Pendine Sands in South Wales. Over there. Get out, get some Morning, Dave. Time to go shopping. Let's yeah. get on. Welcome back to the build, where our two teams are off to a flying start. Bath pyrotechnicians, the Rocketeers and their expert, John Webster, plan to build a classic dragster using a big engine, a lightweight chassis and drag-reducing bodywork. Drop that back in, Dave. I'll go and find some wheels. Meanwhile, Middle England mechanics, the Brum Brums, and their expert, Steve Howard, are going for a turbo-driven monster with a rear-mounted engine on a minimal chassis and plenty of fresh air. Scrap on this. Nothing there at all. Gotta be someone else, man. It's any decent oil. No, that's what I'm looking for. But while the Brum Brums are huffing and puffing, their opponents, the Rocketeers, are living up to their name and blazing a trail. Got Ooh, wait, have more over there. The right Robin there. And they've made the first major find. It's an ancient three-wheeler. Yeah, we've got a, a plastic pig, a Robin Reliant. Are you interested, Uber? Yeah, bring it in, boys, bring it in. Put around the front pillars, Dave. It may not look like a land speed contender, but when you need sleek, lightweight materials on a scrappy, your options are limited. Go on, lads. Well done, guys. Well done, guys. That's perfect. <laughs> We're going out again. We're going out again. Go on. It's a solid start by the chirpy Rocketeers. Brilliant first impressions must be a stock in trade for this trio. <laughs> Bath in the west of England, a quiet and gentle part of the world, until the Rocketeers came to town. <laughs> Leading this happy band of pyrotechnicians is fireworks designer Mark. He shouts a lot. No one listens to him, really. No, we don't take any notice of him anyway. He's a perfectionist in everything he does. He'll be a good captain. Providing sparks of imagination is easygoing pyrotechnical plumber Dave. His head's always full of ideas, different inventions. Dave is very methodical and very precise at what he does. Keeping the team's morale sky high is Mark's business partner, Scusi. He's a big lad, six foot three, 18 stone. 17 stone, no matter what Mark's told you. 
He's clever when it comes to the old computer side of life. The question is, do our chipper chaps have what it takes? I like to think of us as the three Bs. I'm the brains behind the outfit, Mark's the brawn, and Dave's the bold one. We, we are, are the Rocketeers, and, and we're, we're going to blow you away! With the donor vehicle delivered, Scusi and Dave are now looking for a decent engine. Back in the build area, Captain Mark and expert John get on with the task of hacking off the Reliance front end. The four-wheel never took off, did it? No. I got Del Trotter's Robin Reliance in there. <laughs> Already up on jacks. I like to hear. Yeah. Things are moving at a more sombre pace for the Brum Brums. <laughs> we can mark a centre line out on the floor. Yes, yeah. we might have done that. But maybe the slow and steady approach is paying off. Scavengers Derek and Cliff have found a skip containing old engines, and Cliff's keen eye has spotted a possible gem. We've got a V6 here, Deck. Aye. Looks like a Ford V6, actually. What else is it? With a bit of a clean-up, this old lump could be a record-breaker, and the scavengers can barely contain their excitement. I don't think it's any good, man. Well, it's skin of a rice pudding. Aye. How are we going to get it out of here? Mo. Yeah, far away. This engine's no good. It's got no compression. Bring it back anyway. Trust me. Aye. Bring it back anyway. We're going to have to shift this lot to get that out, man. We'd have to get the biggest lump in the place, wouldn't it? The Brum Brum's pessimistic outlook has somehow secured them the meatiest motor on the heap. It's not surprising because where engines are concerned, they're firing on all six cylinders. Somewhere in Birmingham, a group of warm-hearted car wranglers want nothing more than to make your car all better. Meet the Brum Brums. A vital cog in the Brum Brums machine is ray of sunshine and gearbox guru Derek. He knows his ins and outs on gearboxes. It's proper black country, man. I don't think you'd find a better gearbox engineer in the country. Bringing weary wisdom and that eagle eye to the team is engine specialist and all-round mechanic Cliff. When it comes to engines, he just has to hear the vehicles running and he can actually like, pinpoint what needs doing. Keeping his team up to spec is MOT inspector and Captain Mohammed, or Mo to his friends. I've got the gearbox specialist, I've got the engine specialist, and the construction, that's where I come in. So we've got a perfect team. All together now, lads, with feeling. We're the Brom Broms, and here we come. OK, don't strain yourselves, boys. One, two, three, up. Good evening. The sunny scavengers bring back the prize, but will it pass muster with their captain and expert? Polished yeah. the rocker cover. What do you think? Uh, there ain't a lot, is there? But it's an engine. We've got a starter line. What's that in there, Dave? Wisecracking Wurzels, the Rocketeers, have found the same engine graveyard ransacked by the Brum Brums. But after that meaty V6, all that's left is a four-cylinder Ford. It looks like the struggle for power has already been lost. We have more goodies. But Scusi and Dave don't seem worried, because they've spotted something the Brum Brums haven't. A camper van with a very similar engine. The same mix, engine. Yeah, he's all right. We'll have him. It looks like the Rocketeers might have a trick up their sleeves. Hey, Rocketeers. Hi, Elise. Hello. Certainly no hanging around with you, is there? This is our dragster. Is it really? Yeah. This Look. is going to break all records. And you're going to have, a, have a, a massive engine in there, I'm guessing. Or... Yeah, come on in, mate. Over. Got a camper van, probably with a 2, two litre, maybe a 2.2 .2 engine. Yeah, bring that in, mate. Over. How big is the engine you just found? 2.2, .2, but we might have two engines. We might link two together. And can that work? Yeah, if we can get two sort of two-litre engines and link them together, um, it'll be a little easier packaging deal in a smaller cross-sectional area. Having lost the race for the V6, the Rocketeers have had a rethink. They plan to mount two engines in line for a Brum Brum beating straight eight. It's a belt and braces approach. Two engines should give them double the power. But if only one works, they won't even beat the school run, let alone the record. I mean, are you confident that you're going to, that you're going to win this? Oh, it's, it's going to be a walk on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like our madcap missile makers have had a flash of inspiration. Dave and Scusi get down to the nitty gritty. All right, Slady? Yeah, go try. Yay! Yeah! Right, go on it, Dave! Yeah. Oh, there's a great beat in oh, here. Oh, shut up. Come on, you <laughs> chassis. Go on, Dave. Take him in, mate. <laughs> oh, my life. <laughs> Don't worry about that, Dave. 
<laughs> Blimey, Scuti. Bit battered and torn, but look at that. What's going on then, Dave? It's the best one I could find. Best one. <laughs> what happened to the bag? <laughs> Take it. While the Rocketeers are running out of room, in the other build area, their opponents, the Brumbrums, are stuck with a solitary engine. No. Oh, this is a nightmare. But Cliff and Derek's morose approach may be about to improve Captain Moe's mood. That's what we want. This is. And the axle. Box, axle, leaf springs. You've got your shaft assemblies, your back brakes. These will take the ways. This upturned Volvo could be the Brum Brum's dream come true. It has a gearbox, rear axle, rear suspension and brakes all in one unit. The Brum Brums reckon this could provide the entire back end of their V6 monster. A very welcome shortcut. But getting it all out is no easy task and could cost them serious time. Ah, oh, Brum Brums. Very Hello. busy going on here. Now, what are you up to? Trying to remove the back axle. Trying? Trying. Axle in the gearbox. How long have you been here? <sighs> 20 minutes, half an hour. Half Time hour. flies when you're having fun. <laughs> well, look, i better let you get on. But uh, remember, speed, speed is of the essence in the old scrap build. <laughs> the Brum Brums are hoping that using gas cutters will save them time. Sugar. But the gods of scrap seem to be against them. So with things finally hotting up on the heap, it's time to meet the man judging this week's efforts. And let's just say he's qualified for the job. For the last 30 years, this man's been at the forefront of international land speed records, breaking it in Thrust 2, which he designed and drove, then as project manager for Thrust SSC, the world's first and only supersonic car. OBE, true Brit, and with a very real need for speed, it's Richard Noble. Ron. Welcome Good aboard, Richard. No, really <laughs> nice to see you, too. Thank you so much right. for joining us. So, I mean, uh, just tell me, what was the, the top speed that you achieved? Well, um, with the thrust SSC car, the peak speed that uh, Andy Green got to was 771 miles an hour. 771? And nobody, nobody, Rob, has got anywhere near it. Well, I mean, we're asking them to achieve 72, which is the record <laughs> we've ever set. And you think it is possible? Oh, yes, it? yes. We ought to be in the hundreds, shouldn't we? I mean, you know. Well, they, they, they're taking quite different approaches. I mean, the Rocketeers are going for two engines. Now, the use of two engines is really interesting because what it means is that uh, he's got a long, thin engine, and that means he can reduce the width of the car uh, what we call the cross-sectional area, right. and that has a direct effect on the aerodynamic drag. But he's going to have a lot of problems actually linking those two engines up, yeah. because if he doesn't get it quite right, they'll fight each other, they'll fight the coupling, a um, few problems there. So yeah. that's, uh, that's an interesting one. Brum Brums, on the other hand, are going for super simple V6. Yeah. Now, what they've got is a good, solid S6 engine there, right. um, which they're, they're planning to turbocharge it. And that's good, because everything's about power in this game. Yeah. Everything. Now, I realise it's very early days to say, say this, Richard, but I was just wondering which design really is your favourite at the moment? The Brum Brums, well, these guys basically can get the par. That's where they are. So um, I'm with them at the moment. You're that's going with I the Brum Brums? Yeah. yeah. Well, I won't tell them. I don't want it to go to their heads. <laughs> so our judge likes them, and things are finally looking rosier. But what was meant to be an engineering shortcut has eaten up valuable build time. One way of doing it. Let's see what's next now. What do you think to this then, Steve? Looks good. Gives us our rear suspension and rear drive. Uh, teams, you have six hours remaining. Six hours remaining, team. Thank you. With time running out fast, West Country wags the Rocketeers have been busy finding an ex-army Land Rover trailer with 26-inch wheels, ideal for their Del Boy dragster. John's happy enough with his new wheels, but now it's time to get serious. Right, John. Hey, Mark, what do you think of this? This is the input shaft out of that other gearbox. Yep. To link the two engines together, what I'm proposing is if we jig the bearing support up on the flatbed... Centre it, yep. Yeah, and then we weld it. Yeah, and then once they're linked together, but this is going to be our primary drive, sure, yeah. so if this fails, we've always still got one engine. One engine, but, brilliant. Um, it should be good, I think. 
The Rocketeers have already decided to combine two four-cylinder engines to create what's known in the trade as a straight eight. But they've reached a crucial part of the build. It's time to connect the two engines. John's hoping the link will be strong enough and straight enough to harness the dual power. Without the strength, they'll be down to a single four-cylinder. And without perfect alignment, the engines will fight each other and most likely blow. Either way, they'll be going nowhere in record time. Oh, yeah. afternoon, gents. Wow, Hi, Rob. That. Wow. Yeah. That's an engine and it's coming out. Yeah. Slowly. So you got this is this your second have you got one engine already out? We've got one engine already. Right. This is our second which we're gonna we're gonna bolt the two together. But then how do you actually join the, the front engine to the back engine? What, We've what? got a flangey bit. A flangey bit. A flangey bit. This is what we're looking at, hopefully. So that is basically it's this bit that will join the two engines together. <coughs> yep. Yeah. And then the two will be. Well, that looks pretty chunky and solid. It's, that's the weak spot, though. We can't have no play in it. No. Otherwise, when we're when we're zooming down the sands at 100 mile an hour, the engine's going to go pop. Yeah. While Dave steps up to the task of getting that crucial engine link built, Scusi and Mark have found the front axle for their dual-engined dragster. Trouble is, it's still attached to an old Austin Metro. Can you drag it back easy or not? Uh, it'd take a bit of work, but I can get it done, yeah. That worked. With their customary sparkle, the Rocketeers lay claim to their vehicle. But have they been too hasty in their choice? What do you think, then, John? It's not exactly what I envisioned. I make the most of a bad thing. Yeah. While his team debates the merits of buying British, Dave knows his engine coupling will need more efficient engineering. Mmm, German, good and tight. Elsewhere on the heap, their opponents, the Brumbrums, have been slow on the scavenge, but now they've found a bit that will definitely give them a boost. Mo, go on. Found a turbo on a 405 diesel. We're low on compression on this engine. We we'll definitely need a turbo. Yeah, we might as well take that. Well, it ain't going to be a two minute job, Mo. But it's clever Cliff to the rescue again with another time saving idea. Mo, Cliff? We're going to drag it out and bring it back up to the build because we think the front suspension is going to be OK, plus the steering, plus the turbo. With the arrival of that vital turbo in the Brum Brum's build area, both teams have ticked all the boxes on their engine wish list. Well, the whole thing right. straight on. Yeah. And this way we can get at the turbo as well, mate. Well, the team seem to agree it's all about the power. Both teams are loaded up with engines and ready to build their beasts. Can the Brum Brums cram a V6 and a turbo into their Mad Max power cart? And can the Rocketeers finally achieve liftoff with their double-engined dragster? This man drove a car at 633 miles an hour. Then he led the team that designed and built a car that went at 763 miles an hour and broke the sound barrier. All we're asking our teams to do is break our speed record of 72 miles an hour. There's a catch, though. They've only got 10 hours to do it, and they've got to make it out of scrap. Pendine Sands, the spiritual home of British land speed record attempts, awaits our teams as they go head-to-head -head in a high-speed challenge. Bath firework designers, the Rocketeers, and their expert, John Webster, have begun building a dragster using an old Robin Reliant and not one, but two engines. Their pointy-nosed speedster is slowly taking shape but they're still missing what many people would consider vital bits of their build. You didn't want brakes on it, John, did you? Once you go in, you ain't stopping, mate. Yeah, we can dump all that. Birmingham mechanics, the Brum Brums, and their expert, Steve Howard, are keeping it simple with a turbo-driven engine on a ladder chassis. A slow scavenge has given them an engine and a rear axle. The rest of their components, including the front axle and that all-important turbo, are still sitting outside their build area, inside a Peugeot 405. How are you getting on, Cliff? Oh, you're Slow, in mate. Slow. Good and Benny. Bye. But after much huffing and puffing, Cliff has finally disconnected his team's turbo. One turbo. A turbocharger works by using exhaust gases to power an air compressor, which forces more air back into the engine. This allows more fuel to be mixed with the air for a boost in power. But if the turbo is too big for the engine, the extra air pressure will cause the fuel to explode before it should, damaging the engine. And if it's too small, it can't compress enough air to feed the engine and simply blocks off the exhaust, causing it to lose power. Do you think it's going to be worth it, or...? 
But it's only small, though, isn't it? It's tiny, isn't it? Yeah. We were hoping to be about 300 horse, but uh, not on this size turbo. But Steve knows he's on a scrap heap, not in a showroom. Yeah, well, there's one thing moaning about. We've just got to make do we're with what we've got. we just got to make do it, mate, that's yeah, right. That's over in the other build area, West Country pyromaniacs, the Rocketeers, are stripping what they need out of their old metro. We have a throttle. Brum, brum. They also need their front axle, but this is trickier. What about the hydroelastic suspension, Mark? Where's yeah. that unit? Um, or has that got to be disconnected? On a metro, the axles are linked by a sealed system of hydraulic fluid. Remove either one and there's only one outcome. Pressure in there. I mean. You don't want to stand there, mate. <laughs> so the only way to get them off is to disconnect it. And we just have to repressurize it. With some, either yeah. that will be run with no front suspension. <laughs> yeah. John's driving it, he'll be all right. <laughs> John hasn't got time to worry about a bruised behind on race day because he's busy extending the chassis to accommodate the second engine. Both of them have got such a lot of complicated problems to solve. I mean, the, the yeah. Brum Brums with the, the turbocharger, which I just thought, oh, they'll take that off that and bolt mm. it on that. And Two that. problems with the turbocharger. One is that uh, basically it's taken up an enormous amount of Steve's time. The second thing is he's, he's got a V6 to drive. That turbocharger comes off a small car, so it's going to have to work really hard and George will really boost that big three-litre engine. Right. Could it actually work against them then? It if certainly it's not could. Right? It right. certainly could. It could actually throttle the engine. Right. If it... But then, the, then the, the Rocketeers lining up two engines. I just think yep. that's... Now, this is very high-risk strategy, it really is. You've got to get the both engines absolutely positioned exactly right. Yeah. Otherwise, one engine will fight the other engine. Yes. And Richard knows what he's talking about. He's taken two engines to 350 miles per hour. Just recently, we did the JCB Diesel Max. Now, the interesting thing there was we used two engines. But oh, we you did? did right. Yes, so we got one at the front, one at the back but we didn't take the risk of trying to couple the engines up. Right. So each engine has got its own six-speed transmission. So we avoided that risk. Yes. But now, have you changed your mind at all about your favourite? Well, at the moment, um, basically, I'm with the Brum Brums. I think mm. that's, that's, uh, they've got a, a practical and reliable solution to this. So coupling two engines was considered too risky by a world beater. Have the Rocketeers learnt the lessons of history? Oh, I'm a Rocketeers. Last time we spoke, you were going to have two engines bolted mm. together. Is that still happening? Yep. Yeah, I'm trying to get them mated together in a way that we, we, we hope they're going to survive. So, Have you had them both running? One. Uh, we've had one running. We know one's really good. <laughs> Rocketeers, I'm really pleased to see you've still got smiles on your faces. You have got such a lot to do, though. I'm going to leave you to get on with it, and uh, I really hope you're still smiling at the end of the day. Great. Good Thanks luck, guys. Very much. Yeah, cheers, thank you. With only one of the two engines tested, the longer Dave spends making the flange to connect them, the less time the Rocketeers will have to make sure they both work. You're getting on, Dave. Oh, lovely, mate. Next door, a slow scavenge and late start to the build have left the Brum Brums bleakly chasing their tails. Now they've finally finished the welding of the chassis for their turbo-driven Titan. And Derek, the gearbox expert, has had an idea to help them catch up. Now, on our cliff, I reckon we'll make a direct feed off the back of that engine straight onto this box. Direct in. My like bump started. Now, of course, less, <laughs> less to go wrong. Too right there is, I know. Derek is suggesting that they forget about the clutch and lock their monster buggy in fifth. Locking the gearbox in top gear means a sluggish start and very poor acceleration. But ironically for this challenge, acceleration is not important. Our teams will have half a mile to get up to speed and will then be timed between two points. The Brum Brums will be fine as long as they can get off the starting block. Right, agreed that we're going to have no clutch system then. But no option, have I? I don't think we've got time to muck about with it now, have I? With their simple build now made even simpler, the Brum Brums can concentrate on getting their front axle on. Captain Moe builds a brace to hold the springs for the suspension. There was some more box sections, shouldn't it? Couldn't work. It's only going to be doing 140. Glad I ain't driving it. <laughs> that looks like a car, Steve. No, I've got your little present. Oh, thanks, Rob. But this is looking... This has really moved on. This has yeah, really yeah. changed a lot. And you've married quite a lot of different bits together. Presumably this, the axle and, yeah, and, and the gearbox, Volvo. that's a different... That's, yeah. that's out of a different vehicle to the engine, isn't yeah. it? They, and yeah, they're all... Volvo to Ford, etc., etc. We've had to lose that. the facility of a clutch, unfortunately, so... There's no clutch at all? No, so we'll have to go for a rolling start. And what's the structure right at the very front? The, uh, that's that's to hold the suspension towels, which we didn't right. initially want, but unfortunately they're there. 
And also holding the radiator by the looks of it. Well, if the rad goes there, I won't be able to see much. No. So if you can't see, we'll sit him up high. Right. It won't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the finished thing. All right. All right, see you later. See, see you, see you later. later. Thanks, Rob. Hey, lads, we've got a seat. Yeah. Despite their big lead early on, Chirpy Chappies the Rocketeers are now lagging and will have to get a move on if they want to finish their complicated design. Their front axle is on, but not only did it not have a standard suspension system, even its wheels are an odd fit. You right, mate? Uh, just out. No? Just, just out. Just four mil. Right, so we've got to start hunting. Four mil out. And there's a price to pay for getting bogged down in details. Uh, teams, your attention, please. You have three hours remaining. Three hours remaining, teams. Come on, Thank you. Four hours. hours. I'm trying to find a socket. Get a move on. Well, if everybody put everything back where they got it from... With less than half their build time left and that second engine still to prove itself, the last thing the Rocketeers need is a late scavenge. But no wheels means no go, so Scoosie and Mark hit the heap. Oh, too big. No, nope, too big. Nope. We're going to struggle, mate. We are going to struggle. They're all too big. Yep, here you go, mate. Let's give it a swirl up. So with one wheel down and one to go, let's take a moment to find out what driving at crazy speeds is all about. We've met Richard Noble, but what of the pilot who drove thrust SSC straight through the sound barrier? Rob went down to Pendine Sands to meet Andy Green, quite literally the fastest man on the planet. Now, Andy, certainly a thing that intrigues me is what on earth it feels like. You are the only person on earth that, that knows that. <laughs> it starts off up very slowly, up to about 200 miles an hour, not much more than a road car. Then we put on full power, 200 to 600 in 16 seconds. <laughs> so, yeah, at that stage, it's getting quite fast. <laughs> then you can really feel it. So how do you get the opportunity to drive the fastest car on the planet? When Richard decided he wasn't going to drive the car, he, he basically put an advert in the paper, shortlisted 16 people, a whole variety. We had uh, some drag racers, some civilian pilots, helicopter pilots, and, of course, the military fast jet guys. Right. Over a series of weeks, we I got down selected until cool. eventually he finished up stuck with me. Right. And one of the unusual things about the design of the, of the car is the, is the fact that it's got rear-wheel steering. Why is that? We had to make that choice. We had the twin engines, the intakes at the front. There is nowhere to put the steering gear. We also have 34-inch... 300 pound wheels the gyroscopic forces are so huge that you just can't turn them we couldn't find a way of solving that problem if you steer the rear wheels all those problems go away then that just leaves me with the world's fastest forklift truck as i slide down the desert at 700 miles an hour now when you see the thrust car in the museum it looks so sleek and amazing looking thing i mean it's not really like the vehicles we've built there's more of a comparison you'd think the engines were ex-military they effectively we bought the first two engines from a scrapyard the parachutes were also, they were 20, 30 years old. They were ex-military, free-fall bomb parachutes that we then modified and put on the back of the car. There's a lot of recycled equipment right. in there. <laughs> Scrap heap challenge, yeah, there was a little bit of that in there. Back on the heap, night has fallen. Like Andy Green, Bath Gag merchants, the Rocketeers, have also had their feet on the accelerator, looking for a second wheel to fit their non-standard front axle. It's been a long search, but has it paid off? It's not far out, but he is out. But this is scrappy, so they'll have to improvise. Well, will it, will it go on? With armour. Go on with the armour. With armour. <laughs> you have to use the armour and whack it on. Next door, Midlands mechanics, the Brum Brums, have had a much more industrious afternoon. They've mounted their big V6 engine on the ladder chassis, and the front and rear axles are both in place. The problem is the radiator, which is blocking the driver's view. No, that's going to be a pain, isn't it? It is. All right, let's relocate it to the back. To the back? Short, shorter hose runs, lighter weight. Yeah, fair enough. Let's find somewhere to put it at the back of the car. Yep. I've got the brackets made for it. Yeah. Good. Now, the Brum Brums, I'm rather impressed with the, the, what they've done. They've, they've, yeah, they've done it's really it. coming on, isn't yeah. it? I mean, you, you can see what we've got yeah. now. I mean, it's going to be a real speedster that time. Yes. I don't know if they really need a radiator, yeah. in fact. Right. I, uh, if it was mine, I would have disconnected the water right. pump and um, just fill the block with water, and that would be it. Right. But then, then over the other side, the Rocketeers have still got quite 
a lot to do. <laughs> They've got a long way to go. Yeah, yeah. They've still got to marry up those two engines. Yeah. And that is going to take time because it's got to be done really accurately. Yeah. So you've been pretty committed to Brum Brum as being the, the, the favourite yes, all I day have. today. Yes, has, that, has that changed at all now? Uh, the Brum Brum's got the simplest vehicle and the lower risk vehicle. And I think, uh, uh, you know, there's a good chance they'll pull it off. Right. But having said that, the Rocketeers, I think, with those two engines and so on, if they can, if they can master yeah. those two engines, then I think they're in with one hell of a chance. And that's exactly what they have in mind. Engine one is mounted on the dragster's elongated chassis. Look at that. That is Carlos Fandango, yeah. isn't it? But for every silver lining, there's a cloud. Uh, teams, this is your one hour time check. You have one, one hour, hour remaining. <laughs> Come on, Scusi. Engine two slots into place without a hitch. And Dave's delicate flange fabrication marathon is finally coming to an end. Morning, boys. Next door, it's a very different story. The build is all but complete, and the Brum Brums have the luxury of testing their seating position and discussing the best place to put their feet up. Well, where can we have our pedals? We can turn the pedals over the other way now. So we'll turn that one into throttle and that one into brake, because we can put a master cylinder straight under that. I still can't help thinking it looks like, you know, a, a quite large ladder. Yes. With the seat in the middle and the wheels, and yeah. a really huge engine. Yeah. So again, I'm kind of thinking, is the power from that engine going to be so much that it's going to rip the entire yeah. chassis apart? Yeah. I don't know. And no clutch. <laughs> so not, a, not exactly a smooth start, probably, from the standing start. No, they have got some suspension, though, which is a good advantage, yeah. yeah. At least I'll be able to see the crabs walking across the sand. <laughs> John, I can't wait to see you roaring down those sands. <laughs> those Rocketeers, they're clever, you know. They've got both engines just about fitted in, and they're going to join them together. It's a scrap classic. It is a scrap classic. And, it's, and everything about it is great, because it's all just about going to be thrown together at the last minute. And have they tested their second engine? No. <laughs> I said it's a scrap classic. The Rocketeers have now lined up their second engine accurately and are making sure it won't budge. <laughs> that should have been a welder. And they're even turning their attention to the aerodynamic nose section to fit around their new front axle. Hey. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> How's it going, lads? Nearly there. Nearly there. Yeah. Excellent. Next door, it's just a matter of making the pedal position permanent. And for Steve to make sure they've not made the oldest of scrap heap mistakes. Hey. We're there. We've got an engine that turns over. We still need some sort of uh, fan belt. Those use your tights, Dick. Hi. Those use your tights. We're not in Birmingham now. As the final seconds tick away, the Rocketeers have got their nose section on. But in their haste, they've left those engines unconnected and one of them untested. They've given themselves a huge amount of pressure for tinker time. OK, teams, your time is up. Switch off your engines and step away That's from it, the boys. building area. Oh, that was good. Well, well done, Dave. <laughs> OK, teams, you've certainly been caught speeding today, but how will you fare tomorrow? Yes, you'll need to get some rest, gentlemen. You have a testing time down at Pendine Sands, where you'll be making an historic attempt in our Scrap Speed Record Challenge. Well done, team. Yay! Yay! Turbo's there, there's only a couple of pipes. Tinker time, 10 minutes, job done. It's been a supercharged start to the new series, but who'll be fastest over the finish line tomorrow? Will the Brum Brum's turbo-driven monster get the revs they need to win? Or will the Rocketeers reach escape velocity with their twin-engine dragster? Our two teams, the Brum Brums and the Rocketeers, are harder tinker, having spent all of yesterday building their souped-up speed machines. They're looking to smash the Scrap Heap land speed record. And the rules couldn't be simpler. We give each team half a mile to get up to speed. Then we'll measure their time between these two posts. After two goes, the team with the fastest single run will be declared the winner. But there's a tinsy wincy problem. Didn't realise it was going to be an underwater challenge, Richard. Oh, yeah, it's looking that way. It makes me feel like King Canute here. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> no, push it back a bit further. <laughs> so it's actually a lovely spot for the teams to work. They can actually see the, the track they're going to have to drive on. Absolutely. It? it brings it all home, doesn't yeah. it? It really does. 
Midlands Mechanics the Brum Brums have attached the all-important turbo to their V6 Monster and are putting on a final coat of paint. The worries with the turbocharger was that it was too small for That's the That's right, we've got engine. a three-litre engine here, yeah. and the problem is the turbocharger's come off a one-and-a-half-litre engine, so it's got to work twice as fast. So if it works, it works, but if right. it doesn't work, it's going to strangle the engine. Yeah. The Rocketeers, well, uh, it, it's, the it's looks are really good. I love the, I love the, the, the big... Well, we've got the fin on the, the back fin now, which back, is great. Yeah. We've got the uh, the two engines linked up, yeah. and it's a very ambitious stuff. It is. It really it is. is. Bath Fireworks designers the Rocketeers are adding an aerodynamic shell and go-faster stripes to their twin-engine dragster. Now you've seen them, what do you think? Have you changed your mind at all about a favourite? Well, I, I'm, um, I'm still with the Brahms, but, uh, but basically the Rocketeers are coming up fast on the inside, you right. know. That's a bit sign of misfit youth, isn't it? Yeah, right. Look at that. That's better. <laughs> As the tides recede, our teams head out onto Pendine Sands for their historic encounter. First up, it's the Rocketeers. Expert John is having the first go, and 72 miles per hour is the figure to beat. Rocketeers, the scrap heap land speed record awaits. <laughs> Start on the sound of the horn in three, two, one. <laughs> And the Rocketeers are off to a flying start. That bodywork is keeping them glued to the sand. But is it enough? I ain't revving very high. No, it's not. It's not doing 50. We get misfires. Yeah, it's misfiring badly, isn't it? I don't, I don't think that second engine started. No. Lisa to Robert. What did you think of that one, over? Well, it was a very, very good start this end, but it did sound like there was a bit of a problem once he got up to a certain speed. Which explains their, I have to say, slightly disappointing speed of 44.2 miles per hour. They do need their two engines to make the full 88. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. Next up, it's the Brum Brums and their turbo-driven monster locked in fifth gear. Brum Brums, start on the sound of the horn! <laughs> Can they beat the record of 72 miles per hour? Or even the 44 set by the Rocketeers? Yes, yes, it's going. But it's going fast. It's going. Is it slow? It's lost the gear. It's slowing. That was just blew it out. Hey? Just blew it out. It's that turbo. What a disaster. The engine was barely ticking over Absolutely. when it went past Absolutely. I think he was going for the highest possible gear. Yeah. And, of course, that probably meant that uh, there wasn't enough energy going through the exhaust to drive the turbo up, and right. so therefore he wasn't getting the boost. Never get the boost. And he wasn't yeah. going, to, going to go any faster. So after a disappointing first run, both teams' worst fears have been confirmed. The Brum Brum's tiddly turbo has knocked them back to a pedestrian 29 miles per hour, while the Rocketeer's dicky twin engines have kept them barely ahead at 44, which was a new land speed record in 1899. For their second attempt, the Rocketeers have a tough decision to make. Just chop it. Just run on the one. Get rid of it and run on the one. Losing one of their two clashing engines will free up power. But will a single four-cylinder give them enough to break the record? Mark has taken the wheel. Captain Mark of the Rocketeers, this is your chance for a moment of glory. <laughs> Clear it! Get the clutch! Sure it was a front engine? I guess it was the other engine that job. <laughs> I like the way the fin waggled, didn't yeah. it? We got up and sprinted now. <laughs> I think we could probably <laughs> catch it. We... Oh, he stopped. He ain't even made it. <laughs> No, that's it. Oh dear, having gone from a straight eight to the wrong four, the Rocketeer's dream has ended not with a bang, but with a whimper. It's the Brum Brum's final grasp at glory, and Steve makes a difficult choice of his own. Well, we're sorry, this turbo off. off. Cut it off. Cut it off, take the air pipes off. Dex got the Phillips in her. Dex, give me the Phillips. Whip that. Brum Brum's, the scrap heap land speed record awaits your attention. Go on the sound of the horn in three, two, one. 
With their turbo disconnected, will their engine have enough puff to pull them past the Rocketeers and into the history books? Yes. Happy. Ah, the visor down. Go on, no, it's scary. Go on. Come on. Look at that. Go on. That's really going now, isn't it? The engine is free to breathe and the revs keep building. A sudden increase in revs then. Yeah, that's well up. Now he's going. He's got more that's this one. Flat out. It's still building. Yeah. Do it your heart out. <laughs> yeah, All good. In fact, I think we're going to set a record there of ourselves. Oh, yeah. On, yeah. Yep. Kiki! <laughs> <laughs> so brilliant! Well, Did that feel faster than yeah, the last one? Yeah, it felt one? faster this time round. Yeah, what we have to bear in mind is you are driving a car and it was made from scrap in 10 Yeah, that's hours. right. It came off the scrap heap <laughs> and it's brilliant. Lisa to Bobby, Lisa to Bobby, are you there? We are here, Lisa, and we're really desperate to hear the speed this time. I can reveal. The Brum Brum's last run was a scrap speed record of 82.3 miles per hour. That's a new record. Fantastic. Ooh, that is hey. amazing. <laughs> well, teams, in typical Pendine style, all evidence of your scrap speed attempts will soon be washed away by the oncoming tide. But today has been an historic day. And the winners today are... Rum Rum! Yay! Yay! Oh, my Get the champagne open. And if that got your revs red lining, then join us again next week when two more teams throw caution and more to the winds. We'll see you then. We go flipping crazy next week as a team of hot air balloonists from the Wirral take on a trio of aquarium builders from Weymouth in a scrap heap style shootout.